Do you have a growth mindset for this life? Do you have the ability to make the improvements and acknowledge the facts of life that will help you and advance you? Or are you one of the people who simply holds yourself back at every hurdle? Initially, we'd all like to say that we are in the first category. We'd all like to say that we're the sort of people who we care about ourselves, we see ourselves in a good position, we see ourselves in a good way. Maybe it's true. Maybe that's what we genuinely think. Maybe it's not. And not enough people acknowledge what this looks like and what this means. It's a beautiful sunset afternoon here in the UK. Unfortunately, whilst this is the sun going down, it is only half past two. But with that being said, we're going to have an interesting topic for today's video and hopefully that will make up for the weird lighting in the background and on my face. So we're going to talk today about what growth in life looks like because when you have a YouTube channel like mine and when you have ambitions like mine, people are quick to shut you down, right? People are quick to tell you that what you want is impossible, unrealistic, can't be done and you should give up. It's something that I always find fascinating because number one, why would anyone think that for somebody else? Here's the thing that a lot of people can't take in life, and this is always a topic for contention, not on the internet, but when it comes up in the real world. People say, well, to build a business like I'm trying to do, you're arrogant, you're overambitious, whatever. But when I call people stupid, narrow-minded, and uh, closed off for wanting to live a certain way, I get nothing but backlash from these people in real life, right? We're not talking about on the internet here. So I find it fascinating, the level of double standards. But the reason why these people think like this is because, well, it's easy to actually acknowledge. All you need to do is look at the way that they are living and the lifestyle that they've created for themselves. You see, a lot of these people who are quick to dismiss my beliefs, the beliefs of others, the ambition of myself and others, you look at what they've done and it makes sense. I have never been told that it's a bad idea to make money online by people who are making more money online than me. I've never been told it's a bad idea to chase businesses and pursue ideas by people who are doing that. I've never been told it's a bad idea to spend all of your time in the gym. I've never been told it's a bad idea to travel. And the list could go on by people who are fulfilled, by people who are on their true mission, their true purpose. You see, when you're actually on that, you understand that that's a different meaning for everybody. You understand that for me, you know, what works for you may not be the case in my world and what works for me may not be the case for you. Now again, I can acknowledge this. If you want to call me lazy and, you know, stupid, that's fine. I can take that. But a lot of people can't take it back. And the reason for it is because they have a growth limited mindset. They limit their own potential. You see, yes, there is an element of stuff in life that we can't control. There is an element of things that happen to us, whether we like it or not. There is an element of sometimes we can try our all, give our all, and still not get what we want back. But it's always the people who have never tried it who like to give the biggest advice. You know, I get told um, that running a business is a bad idea by people who've never ran one at all. Never even tried. They've looked at some statistics and they've, they've decided it's not viable. The people who leave comments and who I speak to in the real world who tell me that these girls aren't worth it these days, the same guys who are afraid to approach any girls, right? They tell me about what happens when they approach girls in, I don't know, f for our American viewers, the mall or the park or a bar or whatever. They've not done it, right? These people are already limiting themselves straight away. And a lot of people say that I have big ambitions, a lot of people say it's ridiculous to think that you can get away without working a 9 to 5 or build a business that's going to make you a millionaire, maybe I'm wrong, but here's the thing, I'm not going to believe that for a second, because I'm not going to take away from my own power, I'm not going to limit myself like that. What people forget is behind all of these statistics, you know, behind the statistics of, I don't know, 90% of people fail at starting a business, behind the statistics of however many young people are single, behind the statistics of however many people don't have money, for bills even, never mind for luxuries. You know what's behind all of those statistics? People are. People like you and me. People look at these statistics and they use them to sort of actualize or, um, not necessarily actualize, but go along with their beliefs, their current beliefs, right? I can look at a statistic say 99% of businesses fail and then that might make me want to quit running a business and just get a boring job or it might make me want to, I don't know, 
you know, that's just one example. I could give a, a number of examples. It would be a self-limiting factor, but I can acknowledge that the reason why a lot of people fail, the reason why a lot of people are lonely, single, broke, whatever, is because they are the limiting factor in their own life, right? If I think I can do something, I can give it a, a good shot, a really good shot. If I think I can't do something, there's no chance for me. Whatever that noise is in the background. Yeah, if I think I can't do something, I am limited by that belief. If I don't think I can, you know, learn to drive, I can't learn to drive. If I don't think I can get a degree, I can't get a degree. If I don't think I can save up enough money, I can't do it. And people, again, look to these statistics, these supposed facts, and say, oh, well, 67% of people can't, 90% of men can't, 24% of young shut up because we are behind the statistics you are a statistic but you don't have to just be a statistic again the reason why in my humble opinion a lot of guys are single a lot of people are single these days in fact a lot of people are broke a lot of people fail at running a business is because they do not actually put the effort in right i have never i repeat never seen somebody in my life at least and maybe i've just not lived long enough maybe i'll find out otherwise later down the road but for now even if it is true i'm not going to believe it because i need to give myself as much power and mental fortitude as possible i've never seen somebody put their all into everything fully put their all into a, a doable target not like saying that they're going to be seven foot when they're currently five foot four and they're, and they're an adult so they're not going to grow i mean like trying to get a million right i mean like trying to get physically more active and stronger in the gym who can put their full effort to anything and by the way i don't mean this oh well i, I did two hours after i mean you put everything into it right if you put everything into ev anything that you want the likelihood of getting more lucky in this regard jumps but people don't want to acknowledge that because I made a video yesterday, for example, where I spoke about the sacrifices I've had to give up to build my business to a point where we're now making about £10,000 a month in revenue. And that's only just the beginning of the, like, like the curve, right? That's just like, we're just getting started. But it's taken like two months to get to that point, and I know that's extremely fast. I have been running the business before that, but, you know, the expansion took two months. And in that two months, you know what I did? Absolutely nothing. I went to my job, I went to the gym, and I did my business work right listing new items removing old items doing taxes doing um numbers etc i did nothing but the business work and it took a lot of sacrifice i have not seen many of my friends for a long time um and yeah in a way that's quite sad i, I have not in fact no i've had to cut off a lot of the girls in my life because they weren't in it like that right for, for the sacrifice and that's fair enough I completely understand it um, but here's the thing if I acknowledge that anything's doable I have to acknowledge two things number one that everything's my fault right so if I'm rich it's my fault if I'm poor it's my fault and no one's saying that you started off that way so that's your fault no that's not your fault but it is your responsibility so it then becomes your fault it's your burden right it's not my fault that I am the height that I am the way that I look but it's my responsibility, it's my burden, it's the sort of load and the, the realism that I have to now carry through life. But if I go through life instead saying, well, you know, people from my background are three times less likely, that's a growth limiting mindset, right? I don't care about any statistics, I don't care about young men, I don't care about men from this background, I don't care about people from poor background, I, I do not mind, right, when it comes to what I can do. I'm not in any kind of a group. Because I am the, a power of one. I am a power of one. So I don't care what your statistics say. In anything that I want to achieve, I can do, right? Getting 100k cash is not that undoable. Getting a million cash, not necessarily that undoable. Does that mean I 100% know how to do it yet? No. But if I'm putting so much effort in and it's growing this quickly, what can I do with that money, right? If you were making, let's say, five to ten thousand pounds profit a month with a sustainable future, looking like you can do that long term, what can you do then? Investments, move into a cheaper place to save even more money, buying properties in cash or even with a mortgage if you make enough or save enough. So why do you want me to sit there and say that I can't do anything? Why would I even do that? I could sit there and say I don't know how to do this. If I want to put on, I don't know. 30 kg in muscle 
I can say I don't know how to do that. There's no shame in that at all. If I can say I want to be a millionaire, and I think I will, and I know I will, but I don't know how to do that right now, no shame in that at all. But yet again, tying these points back together about the ability to do anything and everything being your fault means it's now my responsibility. If I don't know how to put muscle on in the gym, start eating right, get a nutritionist, get a personal trainer, watch as much content on it as you can, lift as often as you can. If you want to get money, I don't know, get a job, build a business, invest, etc. The list goes on. So many people are just unwilling to do that. Because if they put down me, if they put down you, if I've got people in the comment section saying that I should just work in a boring shop for the next 40 years, you know what that helps to do? It helps to make them feel better. Because statistically, there is no chance of me making it. Statistically, everything that I've got right now is unrealistic. Everything that I've even achieved. Statistically, and this is, you know, going off the statistics, the amount of friends I've got is not realistic for a young person statistically the amount of money i've got is not realistic statistically the businesses that i am actively running will not work you're fighting against the odds but that's why the odds don't mean anything because the statistics of how many people fail how many people are this or that is because of their mindset behind it if everyone really put their effort into doing this and that i'm not saying everyone would win i think based on what i've seen in my life and yeah 21 years not a long time but based on what i've seen in my short life I think some people are genuinely just set out to be losers. And I don't mean that in a, you know, working a job or they're living in a certain way. They're just not obtaining anything. And people always say to me, well, how can you quantify what a loser is? You've got your set beliefs and you say that's fair and you say other people can have theirs. I look at how people feel in their life. I look at how people act. When you can see someone's blatant misery on their face in their lifestyle, the blatant unfulfillment with the way they're going off, that's a loser to me. I don't care about what money you've got, what girls you've got, what friends numbers you've got, you know, it doesn't matter to me. If you seem and actively are unfulfilled, you are a loser. And not to delve into a deeper point, that's actually quite irrelevant to this conversation, but briefly to gloss on it, right? I feel like in this part of the world, there is a big emphasis on material goods being the meanings of a winner you know you're successful because you're a millionaire you're successful because you got this car you live in this neighborhood there's people in the world much poorer than we can even imagine who are, are happy right there's people that i've met from poorer countries they've got generally happier vibes about them so clearly money's not everything to some people it will be a lot but it's not everything but going deeper onto this point right I don't care. I gave the examples that I gave because that's what I am trying to obtain in life. Business, hopefully money, hopefully status to a degree. And you know what? I'm, I, I've said this before, I make no secret of it. The background that I come from, right, is not one of affluence. The background that I come from is the kind where you work in one place for 40 years, if you're lucky, and then you retire. Broke. To a lot of the people in my friendship group, to be fair, even immediate family, the lifestyle that I'm living is statistically impossible. You make money on your phone and you make enough or more than the average salary in the UK. Well, yeah, 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 that's true. I've been against the statistics, statistics all of my life, right? I've been against the naysayers all your life and especially when you are from that sort of more poor background. You know, it's funny, they're the people who could do with bigging each other up the most, but they tear each other down the most. And this is just what I've seen in my lifetime. So I can't, I don't want anyone to tell me in the comment section that it's not true. It's what I've lived, right? These are the people who do you down the most. Because again, if I am in a friendship group, let's say, and every one of my friends is from a poor family, poor background, and we're all working in a factory, let's say, and I actually start making money online, for example, or going to the gym, or going to nicer social circles or meeting new people, what does that do? Well, two things. Number one, if my friends have to choose to acknowledge that, it's going to make them question everything about their existence, just like I had to question it about mine. It's going to make them question why they're in the same neighbourhoods with the same people doing nothing. So most people, most people don't like that. Because, again, I've had this a few times in my life where I've realised the path that I'm on, I feel is completely wrong. And you know what? That is one of the most unsettling things 
And I know I'm at a young age and I'm probably going to face it much more, but that is a very unsettling feeling when everything in your life feels wrong and the path that you're on feels wrong. So again, if you're a strong enough and competent enough person, you may sit there like I have done several times and say, mate, you know, to yourself, I need a big pivot, like fully, everything I'm doing is wrong. And you can take that and you can run with it and improve. But most people would much rather put you down and put themselves down deeply because everyone around them is doing the same thing. They're not willing to break out of the social circle, the, the city, the small setting, whatever. And if they don't do that, they can feel much better about what they are doing. I don't think it's just that people try and limit you. I think it's that they are limited themselves. They've not realised that they can break out of the sort of predestined path, whatever that is. They've not realised that they are the actualizer of their own happiness. And until they do, I, I, I do worry for these people. But it's not my problem at the end of the day. The point, though, is a fairly clear one. All of these people spend enough time worrying about other people, limiting other people's beliefs, and limiting their own. They look at the statistics to make them feel better, but they never actually think about who was behind them, what is behind them, and why they feel like they can't do any better. And I think it's a worrying thing. I think if we can free ourselves individually from thinking like this, around both other people and ourselves, we'll open ourselves up to new potentials. And again, right now I'm seeing a path of progression. This is not this is not a maybe in five years. I'm seeing the growth in my business, in my life, in my personal development that I wanted now. So when you're already on that path, it's, it becomes increasingly impossible to deny that anything is doable. Again, when I first told my people that I was going to be making, remember this, right? That I was like 13 at the time. This is this is a good story. This is a great story. One of my favorites. I first told people in my social circle my immediate circle, that I was going to be making £5 a week on uh, YouTube, and obviously at, at 13, that's not bad, and obviously this is before the recent inflation, right, so that's quite crazy, right, that's like £25 a month, that's not bad, um, well, £20 a month, let's say, <laughs> forgive me, um, £20 a month, that's like, yeah man, that's, that's money for the shops, I'm going to be balling in school, I got laughed out of the circle, I got laughed at, laughed at, for, for just trying to be the person to break that trend. You're not making money on the internet. It's not realistic. It's not going to happen. Does it happen to people like us? A couple months rolled by, I'm making a couple hundred. A couple years rolled by, I'm making a couple thousand. I've, the trend's not really ended since. Making thousands of pounds on the internet to this day. So, I've always been up against it. And a lot of you guys have been up against it the same, if not worse. But you know what you all do? And I'm not saying this like I'm some high and mighty guy. I'm just saying I've acknowledged it. If you guys can hopefully learn from it, that's great. Um, what a lot of people do is they are destroyed by this. They need the validation of their social circle, their family, their friends to do anything. And if they don't get it, it's almost not worth it. But these people, by no fault of their own, by the way, are not on the same path as you or me. I'm on a different path to you watching. You're on a different path to me filming. The person who you're living with is on a different path to you, even if it's your friend, family member, girlfriend. But we don't embrace this enough. If we all want different things, then surely there's more than one way to achieve true happiness.